Hi everybody, welcome today to Snake Clips. Today we're going to just do some routine maintenance. I got a few snakes to feed. I just want to like update some of the snakes you've already seen. Um, we're going to be doing a Bino Western Diamondback. We got our cotton mouth. We got a corn snake, a retic, uh, my Chinese king snake, and a few um, a king snakes that we're going to be taking care of. So today we're just going to show you me feeding up some snakes, uh, maybe a little cleaning here and there. Um, it's just like another day in the snake room. So stay tuned and we'll uh, be back in one second. Alright, the first snake we're going to be dealing with this morning is my albino western diamondback. One of my albino western diamondback. This is the larger of the two. And what we're going to do is we're going to... Normally we clean this cage, but its enclosure is already clean. So what I need to do now is I need to uh, change his water bowl. Now, um, when you're dealing with venomous snakes, one of the easiest ways to get bit is to underestimate a snake. Now, he's in his hide over here right now. And uh, he can come shooting out of there at any time. He can strike out through that hole and he can hit my hand if I were to try to reach down and get the water bowl. Now, it's like, oh, let me just grab that water bowl real quick. Um, he's, he's not paying attention. He won't bite me. Trust me, you try to do something like that, it's going to be a, a regret. And it might be the last time you make a mistake. So, we use our hemostats to grab his water bowl. Take it out of here this way. There's no danger of him striking at us. And uh, I always like to... Uh, disinfect the water bowls. I don't like to just dump the water and just pour some fresh water in there. I like to uh, take the alcohol and I like to cl clean out the water bowl, disinfect it. It's nice and clean. And again, the other mistake again, you don't want to make is after you pour, have a nice fresh bowl of water, is to say, hey, you know what? I'll just reach in there and uh, Put it back and next thing you know you got fangs in your hand so you don't want to do that all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab his his uh mouse here and i like to do uh frozen uh thawed mice and we're going to offer it to him now what I, he's in his hide right now so what i'm going to do is kind of try to get his attention See if I can get him, touch him with it a little bit in there. I don't want to scare him away. Get his attention. See if he'll grab that. Yeah, he's not, not biting at it right now. All right. So what I'm going to do is just to make sure that he knows it's there. I'm going to grab his hide. Take it off of him. Now I'm going to grab the mouse again. I usually don't grab it by the tail. I grab it kind of like by the body here. And we'll see if he'll want to take it now. Kind of got him a little aggravated here. So you can see he's... There he goes. Rub it against there. See if he'll bite that. Sometimes he bites it. Sometimes he don't. But definitely got his attention now. I normally don't stick it right in his face or rub it on his body for a little bit. Sometimes it just makes him mad. There he goes. Starts to flick his tongue out a little bit. Knows there's some food there. And let's see. Come on, you gonna take it? Sometimes you once you get their attention, if you put it up to their face slowly, sometimes they'll just take it right from you. This guy here, he's more of a lay it down for me and I'll eat it later type of guy. Which I think is what we're going to have to do. So I'm going to put that in front of him. I'm going to turn his height around so I can see it when he's in there. And we're going to put him back up on the shelf. Again, one of the main things we want to remember to do all the time is to make sure that we lock these enclosures. Um, locking the enclosures are a good idea, not in my house particularly because I don't have any, excuse me, young children or anything that's going to come in he here and try to get into them. But locking the enclosure also makes it so I know for sure that the lid is on secure um, because otherwise the lock won't go through 
and this way I know definitely that this lid is secure it's in place and that snakes not going to be able to come out so let me put him back up on the shelf and we'll get another snake here um, like I says, he'll probably go and eat that in a little bit. He definitely doesn't like when we watch him either eat. So it's kind of a funny snake. Also, he's one of the snakes that he will only eat one mouse or one prey item. So if I uh, try to offer him a second one, he's not going to take it. Uh, so again, I just put it down there. He's a shy eater. And he's a pretty cool snake, though. All right. And the next snake, snake we got here is my... Uh, well, I used to call him my baby water moccasin, but not a baby anymore. And we're going to have to move him over into our temporary holding container here. And we'll take, he should be hiding under his height. And there he is. This guy is normally a really, really good eater. Now, one thing I like about um, water moccasins is that they normally will ride a stick really well a hook here so let's see if he'll do that today and yep yeah, as you can see he'll just stay right on the hook usually they're pretty good about that we'll put him down here in our temporary holding container which I got a new one um, somebody gave me this nice Rubbermaid uh, actually it's not a Rubbermaid I don't know which one it's it's a hefty, a hefty container. It's pretty transparent, pretty cool. Um, you guys will be able to see the snakes uh, in that one better when I go to move them back and forth. Uh, the only reason why today you're not seeing it is because the battery in my other cameras wasn't charged up. I thought it was. So I'm uh, charging that up. So right now I'm only working off of one camera. As you guys may or may not have noticed, I try to upgrade the quality of my videos. Um, I was using two different cameras before. Um, one had a high def and one wasn't. And so you would see the quality sometimes would go down uh, when I had to use two cameras. And um, you'd see the picture would get bigger actually when you're using the one without the high def. And when you use the high depth, the picture um, would get a little bit smaller. So in order to try to upgrade my videos, make them look a little more uh, professional, a little more pleasing to the eye, um, I got another uh, camera of the same kind, which was a high depth. So now I have two high depth cameras that I can uh, use to shoot from different angles for you. Uh, except it doesn't work when you're not smart enough to make sure that the battery is charged up before you try to use them. So right now we're just cleaning this one real quick for you. And then we're going to move on and we're going to bring him back in here and feed him. And hopefully he will eat for us. He usually is not a picky eater. Um, he'll eat just about anything you offer him. I've given him fish before, and with fish, though, you think a water moccasin would know how to eat fish, but what happened was he grabbed the fish, but his fangs actually went right through the fish, so the fish wouldn't die. And every time he would go to reposition the fish in his mouth, the fish would start thrashing around, and it literally took him a couple hours before he was able to manage to get the fish in his mouth properly to eat it. And, I, and that kind of leads me to believe why sea snakes are so venomous is because um, when they bite a fish or whatever they bite in the water, they have to kill it very quickly um, in order for them to eat it. Otherwise, it's going to get away. So that's why you're... you're um, your sea snakes are extremely venomous snakes, so that it stops the prey from moving very quickly. Now we're just going to hook him, and again, he rides the hook extremely well. And we're going to get him into his enclosure here. And, oh, he's crawling back in there, which is not what I really wanted him to do. I want to offer him a mouse here. I was hoping you guys would get a good view of that. 
Oh, here he comes back out. He heard me. He wants to be on camera, so he's coming back out. And let's see if we can get his attention over here. We're on this side over here. Oh, yeah. Hey, here he goes. He smells that. <laughs> <coughs> I've been coming out for that. There he got it. Now, let's see. Is he going to eat it for us or are we going to have to, uh, is he going to pull it back in his cave? We'll give him a second here. You guys can watch him eat it. Again, when snakes are eating, that's when they're at their most vulnerable time for attack. So before he starts to eat it, he wants to make sure that there's not a lot of commotion going on around him. Um, because once he gets his mouth full, he's got no way of defending himself. And uh, right now, if he wanted to, he could open his mouth and, and throw that mouse out of his mouth very, very quickly. Um, so he could defend himself. Uh, but otherwise, once he starts swallowing, gets that into his mouth, his throat and everything, um, it would take him a few seconds to get rid of that food out of his mouth, out of his throat. And within those few seconds, an animal could uh, potentially attack him and kill him. So feeding time for a snake is actually kind of a stressful time um, because they never know what's going to happen. And uh, like I said, a lot of them will wait until you're not looking before they eat it. Some of them will pull them into their hide. Um, so we just, uh, like him here, he's holding on to it right now. So I'm not sure if that means he's going to eat it uh, there or if he's going to wait till we go away. You know, I don't want to have you guys watching the snake just hold a mouse forever. And I kind of got a feeling that's what he's going to do right now. He's going to wait for us to go away before he decides to eat that. So let me put him back up on his shelf. See, as I move closer to him, kind of freaking him out a little bit. I don't want him to drop that. So we're going to leave him be, and we're going to go on to the next snake. Okay, and now we got my uh, reticulated python. It's a baby. I'm going to give him some fresh water. And he'll be hiding under here. There he is. Really cool, really friendly. I got him as a baby because I want to control the size that he gets. The last baby reticulated python I got got over 10 feet within the first year. Um, Jay from Prehistoric Pets, and uh, I, I have found also from other sources um, that if you feed them less as a baby, you um, just keep them basically full but not overstuffing them, that they will stay smaller. So hopefully I want to keep this guy at approximately, at his full size, I don't want him to get any larger than 10 feet. Um, I'd be really happy if he stayed more in about the 8 foot range, which he may or may not. Um, but he's got a very docile attitude. And I want to be able to use him for my shows for people to actually to be able to touch and hold. Um, these are awesome snakes though. And they're very smart thinking snakes, uh, which I like about them. They'll learn. So if you do something, if I feed him like constantly at one side of his enclosure, he'll learn that that's where I feed him at. Um, if I try to trick him in certain ways so that I can handle them, they'll also learn about that. Um, so they're very, they're very uh, smart snakes. They're not stupid. Um, so, I mean, it just goes to show you that snakes are not just instinctual. They do have the capacity to think. And as you can see here, he's just, uh, he likes to move around. Um, but he's not aggressive in any way, shape, or form. Right, now we got a uh, Florida king snake. And I'm not changing their bedding, even though they might have a little bit of poop on it. Because as before in the last videos, I told you I was fighting with uh, mites. A couple of the snakes had mites. Apparently they got brought in either from an adoption or one that was at work. So I'm going to fold, get him over here on the top of the paper here and see if he'll 
want to eat. I'll offer him a, a fuzzy. He's smelling it. Let's see if he'll take it. Again, you don't want to shove it right in their face right away. Sometimes, actually, when you pull it away from them is when they become more interested in it. Touch his body. There he goes. Look at that tail going. Now he's annoyed. He's definitely trying to... He's smelling this. See how he's starting to coil up a little bit? I think he's going to take it. Oh, he bit it. Now he's just mad at it. Sometimes, though, you Gary goes. Sometimes when they're mad at it, though, you can let them bite it. And they'll actually uh, just bite it out of being uh, uh, mad. And then they'll um, get it hooked onto their teeth. And then they'll start to eat it. Well, Florida king snakes are the largest of the king snakes. They can grow six feet plus. Now, usually when you talk about uh, large size on snakes, everybody wants to tell you the biggest snake that there ever was, you know, and, oh, there's a Florida king snake. I saw he was 8 feet long, 10 feet long. You know what? Um, basically, you want one of most of your snakes, even like the Floridas. Floridas can get 6 feet, but usually you're going to find them more in a 5-foot, 4-foot range. Um, then you got your uh, California kings. Um, they stay... Uh, smaller size, they get between three and four normally. And then you'll get your mountain kings, which are kind of cool kings. Um, they stay skinnier and shorter. They normally uh, get between like maybe two to three feet. And again, it's, it's all how well a snake eats is how, how big he's going to grow. If I wanted to make this guy get larger, um, I after he finished this, um, fuzzy, which he's just holding on to right now because he's watching me, um, I would offer him another one. Uh, and if he would take it, then obviously he's going to grow very quickly. One of the other methods is to what they call kind of power feed him, which I don't like to see anybody do. But that's basically is as soon as he's starting to finish this one up, you'll see the tail hanging out of his mouth would be to take another one and actually put the head right into his mouth and he would continue to swallow and eat a second one uh, where normally he probably wouldn't. Um, obviously he's not going to let us watch him eat so hopefully I can get this back over top of him and he won't drop that. Uh, like that. You can see that tail going again. He's annoyed but he hasn't dropped it and we'll delt nice and calmly and delicately put him back up on the shelf where he'll eat that. Alright, and here is uh, my red sided garter snake. Um, to me, garter snakes are one of the most underrated uh, snakes there are. These guys are great snakes, they're good eaters, you can feed them fish, you can feed them worms, you can get them hooked on eating pinkies. I mean, look at the size of this guy. He is gorgeous. Look at the colors on him. He's got the reds, he's got this like uh, beige stripes going down him. I mean, very gorgeous snake. See the belly scales here. Um, really docile. Like I said, I love garter snakes. Um, they're very underrated snakes to keep as pets. Uh, they're diurnal, which means they're active during the daytime. They move around a lot, put them in a nice um, uh, enclosure that you can see with a lot of branches and stuff like that, and they'll crawl all over the place. Um, like I love garter snakes. I think more people should uh, actually keep them. But uh, for some reason, I guess because they're so common everywhere, when you walk outside, you see them in your yard all the time and stuff like that. So people just think, oh, they're not a very uh, exciting snake. But uh, actually, I think they're cool. I mean, I would keep, you know, a ton of garter snakes if, uh, if I, you know, had the room and, and everything to do so. But I do love them. They're awesome snakes. They're cool to look at. And again, they're, they're cool to handle. Uh, they're very quick though. So when you first get them, they move around a lot. And that's what freaks people out a lot of times. 
some of the smaller snakes like your colubrids and stuff like that uh, they'll flail around when you first take them out and people right away who aren't into snakes uh, or into something like a ball python that doesn't hardly move at all they'll, they'll get afraid of these snakes and uh, and they won't want to keep them but like I said I think once you have one uh, they make terrific uh, snakes and let's uh, give this guy some water now and we'll put him back in here Stick him in there. Let's see if he wants to eat. Oh, he's biting it. He doesn't want to eat it though. Let's see if he'll eat it. He'll take it. Here, a chunky little monkey. Probably isn't hungry is what his problem is. Yep, that's his problem. He just ain't hungry. He's a fat little guy, which is pretty cool though. Alright, so he doesn't need to eat today. We offered it to him. He doesn't want it and that's fine. I mean, you can see how fat he is. He definitely is not hurting for food. And the next snake we got here is my water snake. And the water snake, he's a real butthead, very aggressive. So what we do with him is we basically tail him, which means I grab a hold of his back interior, grab his tail, hook the front of him like this, pick him up and move him over into the holding enclosure. And we'll leave him in there. Uh, water snakes are awesome snakes. They tend to have an anticoagulant in their saliva, which means if they bite you, it will appear, or won't appear, you will actually bleed a lot more, but it will appear that the bite is a lot worse than it actually is. Now, on the positive side, bleeding a lot more is not a bad thing because it will clean out the wound, um, so it's actually a positive thing. Uh, my water snakes, I have quite a few of them. Um, I have Northerns, I have Southern, and uh, what I find is they do extremely well, believe it or not, on being tube fed. Um, they do great, they grow nicely, uh, they put on quite a bit of weight and stuff, uh, eating the mixture of t that I use, which is a very lean ground turkey, uh, repti vitamins, eggs, and water. And they grow to a nice, decent size uh, very quickly. All right, let's uh, get this guy's paper in here. I think one of the misconceptions, too, about water snakes is uh, that you have to keep them constantly on... Um, on a bedding that is wet and that's not really true I keep them on newspaper and um, I give them a water bowl that they can go into if they so choose um, but normally the water snakes aren't even found in their water bowl uh, normally I find them just hanging out on the substrate the only time I find them in their water bowl most of the time is like with any other snake if they're going to go into a shed um, they'll go in the water bowl, but other than that, um, you don't have to keep them constantly in a wet uh, environment. I mean, yes, they do like to go in the water, they do like to go for a swim, but it's not necessary for them to be healthy and everything that they have to be in a very wet, wet environment constantly. All right, I have, this is not this, day, this guy's feeding day, but I have three mice here, hoppers, or actually fuzzies left, and this guy never turns down food. He's my uh, Brooks Hypo. And 
he will definitely eat these no problem. Punch it, huh? Huh? There you go. Yeah. It'll take him like popcorn chicken. He's an awesome snake. I love him. I've went through a lot with him. Um, at one point, or many points, I thought he was going to die. Um, he wouldn't eat. He got very skinny. Uh, but I kept two feeding him. And he put on weight. And now he will eat just about anything you offer him. He's normally a ferocious eater. Um, he'll do, I got three of these um, fuzzies left. And as you can see, he's going to eat every single one. Watch, as soon as he's done with that, he'll grab the next one. It doesn't take him long. He's a quick eater. He's my little garbage can now. Whatever I have left over, I offer it to him. And you got two more here to give him, and I can almost guarantee you he will definitely take both of them. There goes the tail. Because he's not quite done swallowing. But he will definitely go for the next one, won't you, buddy? Huh? There he goes. And he's got one more here he needs to eat for me. So we'll let him swallow that one. And we'll offer him the last one. Well, he's got to get it lined up in his mouth. The problem is the head is sticking out the side of his mouth there. So he's, again, look how he uses the wall to push that and realign it so he can get it into his mouth. And it takes him no time at all to get that one swallowed down. And we'll get him one more here. Get his attention when he's ready. You can watch him push that down. I hope you can see that on camera. Alright. Look at that chase. Look at that chase. There he is. And he's got it. Ugh. And he's fighting. Ugh. And again, he's... There he goes. Now he's using the water bowl to push the mouse to his... Align it into his mouth. As he sucks that third one down. The ham knees are like popcorn shrimp. He just loves to pound them down. He'd sit here most of the day and keep eating as much as I'd give him. Look at... He's finishing up. He's pushing it down. And he's looking for more already. One of my favorite snakes. Like I said, I, he was in bad shape at some point. Thought he was probably going to die. But uh, tube feeding him, he put his body weight back on. Uh, nice and healthy. And now he's one of my power eaters. Alright, well that's the end of our uh, snake clips episode today. It was kind of a mishmash of a bunch of different things. Just wanted to show you some of the other snakes we had. Um, has a problem with the batteries uh, wearing down right in the middle. Uh, so I'm not sure what actually came out, what didn't. But I'm going to try to put a video clip together with what I did shoot today. Um, I thank you for watching this uh, episode. Uh, if you like what you see, click the like button. That way I know you guys um, are liking the, the style and everything of the videos we're doing. Uh, we do welcome your comments. And if you have any suggestions on what you want to see, uh, please feel free to let me know. Either through the uh, comment section on YouTube or you can uh, the email address and all that information is at the end of this video clip. So you can contact me through uh, email or my website, or you can even phone up and talk, call me if you want to. Uh, and also, if you like what you see, you want to share it with your friends, let them know that I'm on. Uh, if you really like what you want to do, I'd love to have subscribers. This way, every time I make a new video clip, um, you guys will be the first ones to know about it. And stay tuned because uh, check it tomorrow. I should have another video clip out. Um, uh, it's uh, coming out of the closet um, and you'll find out what that's all about tomorrow if you watch it so uh, have a great day guys keep it real